features that were required. All right, so we are using the distributed, distributed property for factoring. To factor means to completely divide out what is in common. Completely divide out what is in common. And when I say what's in common, I mean both numerically and algebraically. So that means both the numbers and the variables. And I'm going to show you two ways to do it, and I'm just going to let you choose. One way is super, I think, super easy because it's less writing. The other way is more writing, but maybe if you're not quite sure, it might be a little better. So I'm going to show you both, and I'm going to let you decide. So first, let's look at this binomial. 27y squared plus 18y. And the directions say factor this completely. So what I do is I look always first at the numbers. And I say, all right, 27 and 18. And in my head I say, what's the GCF of 27 and 18? Three. 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 Bigger than three. Nine. It's nine. So I'm going to factor out a nine out of both of them. Yeah. So I write down my nine. Then I look at my variables. I have a y squared and I have a y. And I say to myself, Y cube. Hmm, what y is the greatest mean? common factor of y squared and y? y cube. Just, just y. Uh, y, I don't, y. I don't multiply them together. I see what do they have in common. They each have a y. And then what I do is I divide 9y out of each of these. When I take this divided by 9y, well, 27 divided by 9 is 3. three. Y squared divided by 9 is Y. Then I look at 18Y and I say, okay, 18 divided by 9 is 2. two. Y divided by Y is 1. 2 times 1 is just 2. So this is that factor. Now, can you see how that's the opposite of the distributive property? That's good. Yes. Do you see how that's the opposite? Okay, now if that way was a little confusing to you, to me in my brain, the way that my brain thinks that's the easiest way. But it may not be the way your brain thinks it's the easiest way. Okay. Here's another way. So this is like uh, strategy one. The second strategy is that we can just factor each one completely. So I look at 27y squared, and I, I break down 27 as far as I can. I say, okay, that's 3 times 3 times 3. I factor it all the way down in my head like a factor tree. And then y squared is y times y. So I just factor that out as far as I can completely. So I wouldn't want to do 9 times 3 because 9 I can still factor it out, right? So 3 times 3. And then I look at 18y and I do the same thing. And 18, let's see, it's 9 times 2, but 9 can still be so 2 times 3 times 3 times y. So I factored each of those out as far as I could. And then what I do is I circle everything they have in common. So let's see, they've each got a 3 here. They've each got a 3 here, and they've each got a y. So they've each got a 3, a 3, and a y. What's 3 times 3 times y? 9, y, and y. And then I have to factor that out of each one. So you can do that either way. I don't care which way you do it. My preference, just because I've done this for years and years, is this way, because I can do a lot of that math in my head. If you can't quite do all that math in your head, go ahead and write it down this way. And I think if you have to do it this way, if you do it three or four times this way, five, six times, you're going to be like, oh, I don't need to do that anymore because I'm getting tanked, but I don't need to write it all out. But I don't care which way you do it. But if you're missing them a lot doing it this way, I might say, hey, let's write it down this way just a couple of times. Okay, let's try another one. Any any questions on that? No. Um, you see how we got the same answer both ways, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yep. How many people are leaning towards strategy number one? How many are um, leaning towards strategy number two? Wait. Probably okay. two people are <laughs> All right, let's try another one. Let's try um, negative 4a squared b minus 8ab squared plus 2ab. And we're going to do it my, my way first. Number two, this is... Let's look here. Okay, let's look at the numbers. 4, 8, and 2. What do they all have in common? Two. A 2. So I'm going to factor out a 2. And now let's look at the variables. Do they all have an A? Yeah, no. Yes. Yes, yeah. So. Do they all have an A squared? No. 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 A. 
Do they all have a B? Yeah. Do they all have yes. a B squared? No. No, just a B. So my greatest common factor is 2AB. Huh. Now I'm going to divide that out of each one. Well, what's negative 4 divided by 2? Negative 2. A squared divided by A. A. B divided by B. 1. 1. Okay? Minus, what's A divided by 2? 4. A divided by A. A. 1. Okay. So we don't need to write the answer. That's just 4 times 1. B squared divided by B. 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 Plus. Plus, what's 2AB divided by 2AB? Nothing. Don't, no, 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 it's one. not nothing, it's one. one. You have to write plus one. So if we divide out the whole, because in regular division, when we take, like, let's say we have, this is, don't write this down, but this is just a side note. What if we have 8X equals X? We divide each side by X. 8, what do we get? One. X equals 1. So when we take something divided it by itself, and that's all we do, we get one. Yes, sir. Uh, have you ever recorded a video from getting to start the audio? I don't think so. Um, what would you do if you did? Scrap I'd it? have to go do it off. Well, it wouldn't record, so I'd have to start over. So that was a weird question. Once, okay. Riley, I recorded yeah. it and I saved it, and then when I went to upload it, I couldn't yeah. find it anywhere. I had to redo it. <gasps> Couldn't find my oh name that I All right, now let's try it the other way. Let's try it the other way. And if you, uh, if you're convinced you don't want to do it this other way, then you just watch. But you will not be locked. Okay, so I have negative. I have negative four a squared b. I have negative eight a b squared, and I have two a b. So here, when you have the negative there, you always want to start with negative 1. So always start with negative 1. 4 is 2 times 2 times A times A. Times. Right? 8, negative 8, A, B squared is negative 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times A times B times B. Keegan, what are you doing? Pull your pants up. I don't care. Well, then either take the outside shirt off or pull them up. One or the other. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, good. I was hoping to do that. It looks just like my grandpa. Good. That would be so fun. Start booking you, Willard. You need some food, buddy. You need some food. You need some food. You need some food. You need some food. Hey, Riley, turn around, please. Riley. 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 The last one is 2 times A times B. So what I do there is I circle what they have in common. A two, a two, a two, an A, an A, and an A, and a B, and a B, and a B. So my greatest common factor is two AB, and then I divide that out. Negative two A minus four B plus one. I love the same thing. That's what I got first. Okay. What questions do you have about this? Okay, can no. I give you one of these? I'm going to give you one to try on your own now. Actually, no, we're going to do one more together. One more together. 15W minus 3V. We're going to factor that and it's in the distributive property. Well, now this one's pretty simple. What's the only thing that these two terms have in common? A tree. I almost did too. So, three more. No, it's not You pay attention up here, please. So, when I factor out a three, what's left over here, Gavin? Five. W minus three. I divide out. I don't want one. Wait. One. B. So, just B. Okay? All right, here's your secret problem. What? 7u squared t squared plus 21ut squared minus ut. Factor that using the distributive property. I'm going to pause this. Hi. All right, now we are going to do, oh, I never said the secret word, matrix. Uh, now we're going to do factor by grouping. This will blow your little mind. Like Not mine. Factor. But it's still part of the uh, Yeah, but morning. still, okay. yeah, this is just our second kind of factoring. We're going to do factor by grouping. 
<laughs> we factor by grouping a lot of times when we have four terms. Not always when we have four terms, but factor by grouping, we'll say this is usually what we do when we have four terms. So when we have a quadrinomial. So if you've got four terms, a lot of times that should click in your brain, oh, I'm going to factor by grouping. Yeah. I would like you to just watch this first one. I would like you to not write this one down. But that doesn't mean your mouth gets to start moving. So I have 4QR plus 8R plus 3Q plus 6. Now, if I look at all of those, they don't have anything in common, all four of them, do they? There is nothing except one that all four of those terms have in common. So if you see that, you also know, oh, I bet factoring by grouping. What if I just looked at 4QR and 8R? What if I ignored the 3Q plus 6? Do 4QR plus 8R have something in common? 2R. 4R, R. don't they? 4R. So I'm going to ignore those, and I'm just going to look at this as a little group. And I'm going to factor out a 4R. What's left here when I factor out a 4R? Q. Q. What's left That's here? Two. 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 Just two. Okay. Now, let's ignore this part and let's look at 3Q plus 6. Does it have something in common? Three. A 3. Oh. So let's factor out a 3. What's left? Q. 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 Plus Q. 1. Plus 2. Two. Two. Uh -oh. What? Uh -oh. <laughs> what? Do, how many terms do I have now? Two. two. One. Two. What do those two terms have in common? Binomial. A Q plus two. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to factor out. Mason, are you paying attention? I'm going to now factor out a Q plus two. So I'm going to write Q plus two here. What's left in this term when I get rid of a Q plus two? Four R. Four R. What's left in this term when I get rid of a Q plus two? Three. Three. I just factored it. Whoa. That is, that's I like it. I, I, I'm not, I'm not sure sensing that. excitement from you all, because I wish I was excited. Math is not exciting. Oh, it is. Oh, it's not. Okay, let's, now let's have you guys write this one down. Okay? We still need to be a lot better if I could throw a time somebody. Three and a three. 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 Now, before we do any factoring, this might be a wise decision to make here. <laughs> to not fall off your chair might feel like <laughs> Yeah, Riley, come on. Are you okay? Do you think it's out of the way you can look? I'm fine. Oh, that's your mic. Hold on. Are you okay? Are you okay? Did you just do that bump? <laughs> okay. So let's, boys, boys in the back. Okay, let's take a look here. There's four terms. Do all four terms have anything in common? They don't. So we know that I'm going to factor by grouping. Now there's two subtractions. So what should I do first? Leave change off. Yep, let's do that first. Okay? All right, we're writing this one down. Right, let me write it down. Yeah, that is. Did you change the opposite? Okay, now, so I'm going to group it. I'm going to look at just the first two terms. I'm going to ignore Kiara. I'm going to ignore the negative 4n and the negative 20. So what? when you look at 3NP and 15P, what it term, what do they have in common? Three. A P and a 3, right? A three. So I'm going to factor out a 3P. So let's write 3P here. Oh, that's hot. What? <laughs> uh, yeah. What's left when I factor a 3P out of 3NP? N. 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 How about here? Five. 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 Now let's look at negative 4n plus negative 20. What do they have in common? Four. A negative 4. A, ne a negative 4. So plus negative 4, what happens when I take negative 4n divided by negative 4? You put n in. Just n plus negative 20 divided by negative 4 is Aha. You can kind of look at this and think, oh, that's probably what I want to get. So I have two terms. Here's my first term. Here's my second term. What do they have in common? N plus 5. N plus 5. So I'm going to factor out an N plus 5. What's left? 3P plus negative 4. Very good. That's what I was going to say. Well, I said it first. 
Yeah, right? I have a secret problem for this. Write this one down. Rn plus 5n minus Rn minus R minus 5. So I want you to add one more thing, and that's the additive inverse. So this is our last thing. It's very similar to what we just did. Additive inverse. Before we do one, I want to show you one thing. If I have x minus 3, that's the same as if I flip the order and bring out it and factor out it at 1. Negative 1 times 3 minus x. So look what I did there. So x minus 3 is the same as negative 1 times 3 minus x. So I flipped the order. I factored out a negative 1, basically, is what I did. My, Mason, did you write that down? So let's try another one. What if I have um, 6 minus n? What is that the same as? Negative 1 times uh, n plus negative n, n minus 6. OK, so you see how that is right there? Did I hit record? Okay, so let's do, we're going to do two of these, two of these, and then we're done, and I'm going to have you do a few, and we'll probably start out doing a few tomorrow also. So here's my example, 2mk minus 12m plus 42 minus 7k. Again, four terms, they don't have anything in common except a 1, so I know I'm going to factor by grouping. So I'm going to look at my first two terms. My first two terms have what in common? 2m. <laughs> so I'm going to factor out a 2m. What's left when I factor out a 2m? K, K minus 6. six. Okay? 42 minus 7k, what does that have in common? A 7. So 7, what's left here? 6 minus k. Hmm, these are close, aren't they? No. So I'm going to have to change one of them. I'm going to change uh, this one. So I'm going to have 2m times k minus 6 plus, remember what I can do, I can take it times negative 1. What's 7 times negative 1? <laughs> negative 7, and then I can switch the order here to k minus 6. Wow. I have a question. What? Do you get an email if someone likes your videos? No. Does it tell you who did it? Mm -hmm. No. You dislike mine all the time. You know how much I care, Riley? Literally <laughs> less than zero. It's not. What's the negative? Thing? I don't even <laughs> Okay, now, so what when I factor it out, they both have a K minus six. What's left? Two M. Two M. Oh, oh. Uh, minus seven or plus a negative seven. This is okay. okay, one more together here. Um, one more that I want you to write this down, please. Uh, we'll go purple here. Write this down, please. C minus 2CD plus 8D minus 4. If you think you know how to do it, you go ahead and do it. I'm going to do it with you, though. Gavin, you want to write something down, please? It's our last one. Last one. <laughs> All right, so C, they don't have anything in common, all four of them. So since there's four, I know I'm going to use factoring by grouping. I'm going to look at the first two. They both have C in common. C divided by C is 1, 1 minus 2D. Over here, they both have a 4, 2D minus 1. Now I want this switch, so I'm going to leave this 1 minus 2D. I'm going to factor out a negative 1, and I'm going to switch the order. They both have a 1 minus 2, whoops, I forgot my parentheses there. They both have a 1 minus 2D, and then I have a C plus negative 4. All right, I'm going to stop this video. Bye. It's a long one.